Alright, so, hi guys. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit. Um, first off, I wasn't updating. One, because my mother was here. Two, I'm lazy. Three, I went to, I had to go catch up on movies. And four, I was at a dollar event. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about basically what happened. My mother was here for a month. She basically made me make this mess because I don't know where my stuff is and I have to put them somewhere, you know? So, they're on the table. I haven't cleaned, up, cleaned it up yet, but it covers literally half the table. Okay, so number two. Um, I went to this particular event. Um, you, got, you can't really read it, but it says Escape or Die on it. Um, it's basically a Resident Evil collaboration event. Um, so, um, it's basically a real escape event. Basically, they give you a set of rules, and then they give you a sheet of paper to write stuff, and then you're supposed to clear this particular puzzle. Um, and you're supposed to clear it in less than an hour. Um, otherwise, it's the end for you, and then they help, uh, they tell you the answer because you can only try it once. Um, it's a very, very interesting event. I'd really like to try a different one again. Um, it doesn't have to be Resident Evil. So, um, moving on, I went to go watch the movies. Um, I watched three so far. I'll be watching The Avengers this weekend. So, first movie I watched was this. Um, my husband was actually curious because he loves Summer Wars and it's done by the same people who did Summer Wars. Um, personally, in my opinion, I did not like this movie. Um, they do actually make really, really good, um, what do you call it? They do really, really nice, uh, visuals. There we go. But, um, overall, the story is a little bit complex for a little kid to understand, and even for adults, it's probably better if you are a parent. Um, if you're not a parent, it's actually kind of... It might get on your nerves. Um, I didn't like how the ending went. They could have at least depicted it better, in my personal opinion. So, um, moving on. This is a movie that I'm, I can probably rant about, um... And by rant, I mean rant. I could probably go for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, after School Midnighters. Um, awesome movie. That's really ridiculous. Um, as you can see, um, you can see a human anatomy model. And you can see a little skeleton in the background grabbing on. Um, this is called Kim Strake. And this is called Goth. Um... They are basically about to get discarded um, as they are building a new science lab where the whole story starts. And um, in order to stay at the school, they have to do a certain amount of things. So um, basically, the three kids that you see right here have to collect three medals and then make a wish. And whatever they wish together at the same time will come true. So, um, ridiculous movie, as you can see, um, it is, this, Kim Strake is voiced by, um, Yamadera, who did the voice for Spike in Cowboy Bebop and whatnot, um, he is to told to be the best voice actor in Japan, even the voice actors admit that he is the best, so, yeah, um, I was actually at the press version of the movie, um, so I was actually able to see the, the voice actors in person, and I thought it was great. Um, I really, really liked um, how Yamadera actually did part of the movie. Um, there was a portion where he actually, uh, the character sucks helium gas, and he makes, you know, the squeaky voice. Um, they actually did it with the helium, and then they took one without the helium, and they actually accepted the one without the helium because he, he could impersonate the helium voice really, really well. So, um, awesome movie. I'm not sure if it's going to come out in the U.S., but I really, really wish it would because it is a really, really great movie to watch. This is more kid-oriented, but it's, it's still laughable. I actually like this movie. So, um, and rant. Um, if you guys are curious, you, you might as well look it up on YouTube while you're still here. Um, the name of uh, After School Midnighters and you'll find trailers that will probably buzz your mind. Um, if you are on crack, don't watch it because your brain might explode. So, anyways, um, third movie I watched, Dark Knight Rising. Um, I didn't like this movie personally, but that could be because I actually watched After School Midnighters the day before and it was just so on crack, I loved it to pieces. So, um, Dark Knight Rising. Um, 
I guess I followed Batman a little too much because I didn't really like the whole connection between Talia and Bane, and I didn't like how Bane's mask setting was. Um, I was kind of expecting pro wrestler dude, but you know, reality wise, that's probably not going to happen. And so, um, I wasn't really happy about Dark Knight Rising, and right at and also the movie theater that we went to sucked. Um, the chairs were really hard, and I could not sit comfortably and watch it. So. My brain probably shut down like once during the movie because I couldn't stand the painful chair and the whole connection between Talia and Bing and yeah. Anywho, um, that was Dark Knight. My husband and I just ended up right after the movie Googling up after school midnighters, so we're a little bit insane over that movie. Yeah. So, um, anyways, that's that. That's all the movie stuff and a little bit about this guy. So, um, I did not have this guy before, so this guy is definitely new, um, they had Tokyo Dollism the other day, and I picked this guy up, um, I really, really liked how he looked, I was curious about the whole system too, anyways, so this is Robert Show Studios Evan, or artist doll as they now call themselves, um, that makes it two ovens in my house, one that I call house one in this guy. Anywho, um, he does resemble a Kirby doll. Um, a lot of people who actually came up to me when I was tearing him open at Dolls and Plus questioned if he was a Kirby doll and if I managed to get one. And the only reply I can say was, no, this is not a Kirby doll. So he's wearing actually Kirby doll outfits and shoes. Um, this is a shoe right here. So, um, if you've probably seen it on the Kobe doll side, so um, that's probably one of the major reasons as to why everybody kept thinking he was a Kobe doll. Um, his outfit is by Kobe, so, and his face and bodily resembles him. Um, ever since they changed their name to an RS doll, they have this weird spinal spine bone system, and I think it's a gorgeous piece of work. Um, it basically allows the guy to literally take uh, natural poses. Um, when he stands, he doesn't stand rock solid. He kind of leans over to one side or the other side, and he takes really, really natural poses. Um, I'm not sure if it's the spine, spine bone system at work or not, but it's a really, really nice system to have, and it really helps me to pose this guy. So, um, that's that. That's my probie doll. Um, other dolly rants. Fairyland, chic line, woohoo. Um, I've always been eyeing one, but um, the only time I could actually buy chic line was back when they actually had their Japanese type of um, overpricingness. They literally overcharged at least $200, so um, I was obviously disgusted and refused to pay that price, so I could never buy one. Sadness. Um, Anyways, that's all done now, so I don't have to worry about it, and yeah. So, that's all I have to say for the moment, I guess. Oh, um, I'll do a little quick review of this thing, too. Uh, this is a Pico Nemo body, which is relatively new. Um, it fits an Android head, so if you have an Android and you want to give it a bigger body, I can totally recommend this to you. Um, this is a D4, uh, Deforme body, as or the D body, as they like to call it. So it has really, really big hands compared to the arm, and the legs are a little bit thicker. Um, they also have a version in which the body is exactly the same as a uh, normal pure Nemo, just this small. So um, if you guys are interested in that, I'll um, I'll maybe do a review on it soon. So anyways, I'll catch you guys again, um, and bye-bye.